one day the AIs are going to look back on us the same way we look at fossil skeletons in the plains of Africa. An upright ape living in dust with crude language and tools, all set for extinction. There's a speeding up of information processing technology and a cultural reliance upon it beyond which we can't actually foresee the level of change that can come over our society. It's like, you know, an event horizon past which we can't see. The best chess player on Earth is now always going to be a computer. There's not going to be a human born tomorrow that's going to be better than the best computer. We have superhuman chess players on Earth. Now imagine having computers that are superhuman at every task that is relevant, every intellectual task, right? So the best physicist is a computer. You know, the best medical diagnostician is a computer. The best prover of math theorems is a computer. The best engineer is a computer, right? There's no, there's no reason why that we're not headed there. The only reason I could see we're not headed there is that something massively dislocating happens that prevents us from continuing to improve our intelligent machines. The moment you admit that intelligence is just a matter of information processing, and you admit that we will continue to improve our machines unless something heinous happens, because this, this intelligence and automation are the most valuable things we have, at a certain point, whether you think it's in five years or 500 years, we are going to find ourselves in the presence of super intelligent machines. And then at that point, the best source of innovation for the next generation of software or hardware or both will be the machines themselves, right? So you're talking about a system that can make changes to its own source code and become better and better at learning. And if we give it access to the internet, it has instantaneous access to all human and machine knowledge. It does thousands of years of work every day of our lives, right? It's just thousands of years of equivalent human level intellectual work. We're talking about electronic circuits being a million times faster than, than biological circuits. Just imagine being in dialogue with something that lived the 20,000 years of human progress in a week, and you'd say, listen, that thing I told you to do last Monday, I want to change that up. And this thing has made 20,000 years of progress. What worries me most about this, and what is also interesting, is that I think the primary intuition that people have is, no, 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 that's just, that's just not possible or not at all likely. If intelligence is just information processing, and we, we are going to continue to build better and better information processors, at a certain point, we are going to build something that is superhuman. So whether it's in five years or 50, it's the biggest change in human history I think we can imagine. There's no guarantee that this process will remain aligned with our interests. There's a deep assumption in many of these people that once we get closer, once we get something a little scary, then we'll pull the brakes and talk about it. But the problem is everyone is essentially in a race condition by default. I mean, you have, you know, Google is racing against Facebook and the U.S. is racing against China and every group is racing against every other group. To be the first one with incredibly powerful narrow AI is to be the next, you know, multi-billion dollar company, right? So everyone's trying to get there. And if they suddenly get there and sort of overshoot a little bit, and now they've got something like, you know, general intelligence, you know, or something close, we don't have a system set up where everyone can pull the brakes together and say, listen, we've got to stop racing here. We have to share everything. We have to share the wealth. We have to share the information. This truly has to be open source in every conceivable way. We have to diffuse this winner-take-all dynamic. You know, I think we need something like a Manhattan Project to figure out how to do that. Not to figure out how to build the AI, but to figure out how to build it in a way that does not create an arms race, that does not create an incentive to build unsafe AI, which is almost certainly gonna be easier than building safe AI. I mean, it's scary that we have a system where if you gave the best possible version of it to one research lab or to one government, it's not obvious that that wouldn't destroy 
humanity. I think there's a few people that put it the way you put it that terrify the shit out of people. <laughs> right. And right. everyone else seems to have this rosy vision like we are always going to be here. But are we obsolete? I mean, is this idea of a living thing that's creative and wrapped up in emotions and lust and desires and jealousy and all the pettiness that we see celebrated all the time, we still see it. It's not getting any better, right? We might be here to make that thing. And that thing takes over from here with no emotions, no lust, yeah. no greed, and just purely existing electronically. And for what reason? There are computer scientists who, when you talk to them about why they're not worried, they just swallow this pill without any qualm. Like, we're going to make the thing that is far more powerful and beautiful and important than we are, and it doesn't matter what happens to us. I mean, that, that was our role. Our role was to build these mechanical gods. The true horror for me is that we can build things more intelligent than we are, more powerful than we are, and that can squash us, and they might be unconscious, right? They're right. Like, there might be nothing, like the universe could go dark if they squash us, right? Or, or at least our corner of the universe could go dark. Right. And yet these things will be immensely powerful. The ethical silver lining, you know, speaking you know, outside of our self-interest now, but just from a bird's eye view, the ethical silver lining to building these mechanical gods that are conscious is that yes, if we have built something that is far wiser and has far more beautiful experiences and deeper experiences of the universe than we could ever imagine, kind of godlike experience, well, that would be a very good thing. That is a terrifying scenario of the future. <laughs>